Will Israel wake up? Exploring Zman Lit Orer by Hadag Nachash, the time to wake up. So a little bit of background on the social justice protests of 2011, on the back of which this song emerged. Months before the Occupy Wall Street protests in the United States, social justice protests broke out in 2011 in Israel. There was an overwhelming frustration at the rising cost of living in Israel and high taxes, whilst wages were stagnating. And this distress was seen as a result of government policy. Early childhood education costs were going sky high and the costs of a buggy for a kid was incredibly expensive, which led to one of the demonstrations which was simply parents with their kids in buggies. There were many accusations of corrupt dealings when Israel discovered that it had gas fields in the sea and somehow it was handed over to a monopoly which most Israelis felt was not in the Israeli public's best interest. Dwindling public services led to a terrible fire in the Carmel forest to the extent that you could see the smoke rising on Google Earth and the accusation was that the fire services had not been properly resourced for years. Rent was going higher and higher and higher and the Prime Minister and the government was being blamed for this. The protest began as tent protests. It began in the centre of Tel Aviv on Rothschild Boulevard. This is where you can see these tents. People moved out to live on the streets. And these protests in the tents spread across the country such that there were tent camps all the way north and all the way south. Every Saturday evening throughout the summer, every week, there were marches all over the country, culminating in a total of 500,000 Israelis one Saturday night, which is one in 14 Israeli on the streets. So that would be the equivalent of some 23 million Americans marching all across the country. So on that night, the largest gathering took place in Tel Aviv at Kikar Hamedina. This is what it looks like empty, and this is what it looked like that night. 300,000 people gathered to hear speeches and also to see performances of top bands, including Hadag Nahash. It was completely logical that Hadag Nahash would perform at this huge event. They'd been performing at various smaller events, at various tent camps throughout the weeks, and also a significant number of their songs speak specifically to these socio-economic issues that had been troubling everybody involved in these protests. And so here you can even see Sha'anan Street, he's there performing at the huge demonstration and here he is in one of the shirts with the logo of the protests themselves. But the song was written a couple of years later and here's why. The reason that that large demonstration was the end of the demonstrations was because the work moved from the streets to the Knesset to the parliament. The government agreed to set up the Trachtenberg Committee, headed by Professor Trachtenberg, a highly respected economist who had been demonstrating in the streets. But he was put in charge of a committee that, together with the protesters themselves, coordinated ways to present the demands in the language of policy proposals. The government accepted all of these policy proposals unanimously, and then the question is, to what extent were they implemented? And by the time the song came out, it was becoming clear that some, that some proposals were going to be implemented, but some proposals were going to be watered down, and a significant number of the proposals were going to be unimplemented altogether. And so as you can see from this graph which was created back in 2016, you can see that of the 63 recommendations, 11 were not implemented at all, 25 were implemented partially, so only 27 out of 63 recommendations were actually implemented. And it was from the frustration that led to the protests and then the added frustration that the protests got strung along and never got anywhere, that the song emerged in 2013, It's Time to Wake Up. So, 
click up in the top right hand corner of the screen for the link to the song itself with its embedded subtitle translation and you can also find the link down below. Meet you back here after you hear the song. Yeah, you may want to take a breath after that song and perhaps see whether you yourself could even sum up your response with one word. A few references from the song. When someone sets himself on fire, says the song, and here's a grab from the YouTube video itself. This was one of the more tragic stories of the protests. Moshe Silman was in great financial and medical distress, and he attended one of the rallies in Tel Aviv and set himself on fire by way of protest and died a few weeks later from his burns. We'll show you who is the Messiah and who the mule. Religious Zionism always saw that there was something of a paradox that the state of Israel, that religious Zionism saw as a miracle, had been set up effectively by mostly secular Jews. And so the idea emerges that, of course, the Messiah is prophesied to arrive riding a mule. So the secular majority in Israel, they are the mule of the Messiah. Secular Zionism has been seen as the dumb beast of burden that will herald the higher spiritual plane of the messianic age. And so here in this song they're saying, I'll show you who's the Messiah and who's the mule. And now you. The song opens with a statement against violence. Don't believe in violence, believe in poetry. How do you square this approach with the underlying menace that can be felt from the video? Do you find the chorus equally applicable to your life in your country, that everything's falling down and it's time to come out into the streets. This song was played throughout the country and it was used as the theme tune for several news segments and documentaries and it's received some 5 million hits on YouTube, bearing in mind that there are only 9 million citizens in Israel and they don't all of them use YouTube. How does this affect your understanding of Israeli society? where such a scolding protest song reaches such a wide Israeli audience. And here you can see in this final image, here you can see the Balfour protests of 2020, which members of Hadag Nachash are very much in support of quite vocally and visually. But you can also see people in the crowd are using the language of this song in their demonstrations. This sign being held up says Zazman lit orer habait mit porer. It's time to wake up. The house is crumbling. They're quoting from the song by Dag Nachash at these protests which are taking place some seven years after the song came out and it's still alive on the streets today. <laughs> This was brought to you by Makom, the Israel Education Lab of the Jewish Agency, together with Moisha House, in a partnership generously funded by the Jim Joseph Foundation. Thanks very much. <laughs>